Hello, Jane, how y'all doing today? Oh, hi, Billy Joe. I'm okay, but I had a car accident a few weeks ago and I'm still struggling. I think I've got some whiplash associated disorder. Well, I'm a physical therapist, you know. I know. I saw you last year. You really helped me after my car crash. You're good. Thank you. I'm even better now because I do evidence-based practice. That sounds great. Do you like doing that? Yes, it's very good. Except, well, I feel disenfranchised and am no longer sure of sure of my professional or personal identity. My wife left me because I spend all my time reading journal articles, and I don't see my kids anymore because I have to do CPD courses on weekends. And my dog went and died. Oh, I'm sorry. So why do you do it? Well, it's how modern healthcare works now. And it is in the patient's best interest, of course. Also, there are some very strong characters in charge of it and they say we have to. If we don't believe in it, we get belittled and ridiculed. So, like the church? Er, yes, I suppose. Like the church. Well, er, uh, anyway, you are really good and I wonder if you can help me like last time. Well. What I did last time doesn't work anymore. But it worked last time. I know, but I have read some randomized controlled trials and some systematic reviews since then and they say that what I did doesn't work anymore. But I felt great last time, and was eased of my disabling pain. I was able to return to work and provide for my family. I felt fulfilled and was enjoying life, until this last car accident. Yes, but that was before I read the research papers. Now it doesn't work. Also, I don't believe what you say anymore. What? Er, well, maybe it's me that I don't believe. Er, I'm not sure anymore. Either way, this human interaction is biased and I can't trust my senses anymore. But I was just telling you that I got a lot better last time. Shut up. Stop telling me things. It's just too unreliable. Well, okay if you say so. So doesn't your treatment work at all? Well... Actually, it might do. I did some calculations based on the data and the research reports. If I didn't treat you, you would have a 33% chance of getting better anyway. But if treated you, this chance of improvement would be 52%. You would be 1.21 times more likely to improve if I treat you. The absolute benefit of being treated would be 22.26%. The treatment would increase the chance of improvement by around 21 percent. However, you are slightly younger than the study group and a different socioeconomic background. Considering this, and integrating the data with your own context and my clinical experience, I'd say that the relative benefit has shifted slightly, but the absolute benefit might still not be clinically significant, assuming the outcomes of interest are validated for your demographic and clinical problem. And today's representative of your average day in terms of your ability to provide coherent and meaningful responses to any psychometric tool I may use. Oh. Okay, what does that mean? I don't know. Well, can you treat me or not? Well, there's something else you should know. Okay. You see, for your condition, I would have to actually treat 13 other patients so that one gets better. That is the number needed to treat. Well, how many have you seen so far? Well... Since I did the calculation, I've seen four. And do you have any others booked in? Yes. By next Tuesday I would have seen 13. So can I come first thing Wednesday morning? Yes. Then you would have a 100% chance of getting better. Great. Please book me in. Okay, oh. I still won't be treating like I did last time. Oh, why? Well, you see. Your pain is actually not related to the stiff joints and altered muscle motor strategy of your neck muscles. It's more to do with your brain. My brain? Yes. You see, some very clever people looked at the brain of a person and saw some activity in it where they had pain. But doesn't everything we do as human beings involve direct association with brain, mind and consciousness? Erm, um, maybe. I haven't read that stuff though. Well, okay, which part of the brain was it? I think it was the bit that is responsible for pain. Okay, so when that person experienced pain, the part of the brain that is responsible for experiencing pain was active. Yes. It's exciting, isn't it? MMMM. Oh, wait. Actually, I read that your pain has something to do with your immune system. My immune system? Yes. Oh. 
Okay, well, is that good evidence? Damn, yes, it is. It is based on TNFIL alpha, PNGCCL2, NGL Schwann cell macrophages, and it has all been proven in one rack. Or a shrew. Fish. Or something. Um, can't you just do the stuff you did last time? Well, before I do anything, you need to tell me about your pain. Well, I get this ache in my neck, and a sharp pain up into the back of my head, and then... Wait. Stop. I need a metaphor. What? A metaphor. You need to tell me that your pain feels like something. Well, it does. It feels like pain. No. You need to say it feels like something else. Metaphorical. Like, er? A spoon? A spoon. Yes. That sort of thing. Um. Do da do da do. Oh, actually, I think I'll go and see the osteopath. Okay. Bye. Bye.